And we're back to Oman, but this time not in Oman Mountain, but rather in the desert. In fact, if it wasn't winter, I wouldn't be able to stand here. It's incredibly hot, but it's also incredibly spectacular. The reason I'm here is for the rocks, as always. They are lower Cretaceous in age. This is the Schwaiba Formation, and it was deposited on a ramp in humid condition. So let's talk about system tract on humid ramps. So the Schwaiba Formation is one of the world's greatest oil and gas reservoirs. So it's really interesting to use this as our case study here. And of course, not only that, but also it was deposited on a broad empiric ramp in relatively humid conditions. We'll see that we have evidence for humidity in the rock um, themselves. We'll have a look at the rock later on. So when was the Schwaiba Formation deposited? If you look at the lithostratigraphic chart that I'm showing you here, uh, you can see that the Schwaiba Formation dates from the Aption, so 125 to 112 million years. So that's the lower Cretaceous. We will focus mostly on the upper Schwaiba member and also we'll look at the Aption to Albion Narumer Formation, which uh, provides the seal. You will see this is quite, um, quite important. Now, what happens in terms of paleogeography in the Middle East, in the Lower Cretaceous? So this is a paleogeographic map of the Middle East. And um, you see here the al Hukuf High. This is where I stand. So this used to be a paleotopographic high. But if you went from this location uh, towards the northwest, you would go into an interior basin known as the Babs Basin. That's a very important concept here for understanding Middle Eastern uh, deposits, not just for the Schwaiba, but in general, also for the Jurassic, is that these very broad, thousands of kilometer broad epiric shelf had sometimes intra-shelf basins. And the Bob's Basin was several tens of meters, maybe a hundred meter deep. So it was a proper basin where you would not have had carbonate deposition, certainly not shallow water um, carbonate deposition. But also you have a very broad shelf here of uh, carbonates deposits all around me. This is shown on the map here in uh, green. So that's the shallow water carbonate shelf. And from where I stand here in the Al Hukuf High, you would have had open ocean if you went a few hundreds of kilometers towards the east or maybe three, four hundred kilometers towards the north. You would enter the Neotetis Ocean. So we'd have like proper oceanic uh, conditions. So that gives you a little sense of where we are in terms of the Schwaiba Formation. In terms of the stratigraphy, so in general, broadly speaking, in the Middle East, the lower Cretaceous is characterized by progradation to aggradation, and you have multiple cycles of progradation to aggradation. So it starts with what is known in, o in Oman as the Hapshan Formation, which is a, a progradational cycle of carbonates dating from the lower Cretaceous on top of an unconformity that is Jurassic in age. And then we go into what is known as the Lekver Formation and the Carib Formation. So these are two cycles of essentially progradation to aggradation and um, you have broad deposition of, uh, of uh, carbonate facies on the shelf. And after the Carib Formation comes the Schwaiba Formation and the Schwaiba Formation is one of these one of the last um, progradational sequence before we go into a major unconformity at the top of the Schreiber Formation. We'll have a chance to talk about this uh, during this class. If we go back to the concept more theoretical of what happens to the uh, deposition of carbonates on broad ramps or on ramps or on platform, during a low stand in humid condition, it's not that different from isolated platform because the climatic conditions are similar. So you expect karstification, of course. 
You also expect to have fringing reefs, so small reefs that basically are low stand reefs. And depending on the angle of uh, repose of your sediment on, on the slope, you can have turbidites or debris flow um, taking place. So very similar to what we've seen on isolated platform. There is one major difference between a REM system and a platform system, even if both of these systems are attached to the continent. And that difference is that the ramp will never have a steep sided geometry. And that implies that the falling stage system track and the LST can be slightly broader uh, and, and more important than on a steep sided platform where you're limited to a fringing reef. So that's some geometrical differences that you need to keep in mind when you look at these two systems. So that brings me to a block diagram of how the low stand in the upper option lower Albion of uh, the Schwaiber formation might have looked. So you see that we probably had in the Al Hukuf High some exposed lower Schwaiber formation, so some exposed lower carbonate platforms. And we see here already an indication, perhaps we had some, uh, some evidence for dissolution. And as we move progressively towards the shore, we see that we have a lot of palatal muddy sand shoals. And we see a few shoals. Now those shoals are characterized by rudists. Remember in the Cretaceous that the corals no longer form reefs. They're not the main reef builders. The main reef builders are rudists and rudists are bivalves. And we think that some rudists at least had a symbiont as well attached to them so that they, they were also tied to light penetration. They, they required light penetration like modern corals um, do. And as you move forward into the basin, you see that we have a clastic influence, intershelf carbonate, mud and claystone, and then more uh, carbonates. This is the situation at the low stand. What happens when we go into a transgressive system track? So during the transgressive system track, again, on those um, humid attached platform, what you can typically see is the development of tidal flats. You start to develop big tidal flats. You also have uh, the shelf is starting to be flooded. So you have more space on the shelf to produce carbonates. That gives rise to patch reefs. You can have patch reefs here. Um, and also uh, carbonate production on the shelf in the lagoon. And at the edge, you start to form reef, but you also have a lot of grain shoals during the transgressive system track. So it's a pretty dynamic system, the transgressive system track, because the shoreline is shifting all the time. So some reefs start to form, but you also move quite a bit of sand and you can still have sliding block and mass transport deposits. 